want to speak to you tonight or talk to you tonight about God's passion for my life. God's passion for my life. That Today is Valentine's Day. Now all of you husbands, you did the right thing, right? Did you, buy your, you, you bought your wife a gift, you took her out to eat, whatever. Alright, I had one amen. So the rest of y'all, y'all need to come for counseling. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, uh, how, how to treat your wife. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to talk tonight about the passion that God has for our life. In other words, how is God involved in your life? And we're going to look at six truths, and I, I actually came up with 14 truths, and I cut all that down to six, because I didn't think y'all would want to be here till 10 o'clock tonight. But uh, there's some powerful truths when we're thinking about uh, how God feels about us and how God is involved uh, in our everyday life. And so I want to uh, to deal with that, and we're going to be kind of all over the place with Scripture, and I appreciate Brother Carl uh, sitting in for me doing the uh, media tonight. I normally am the one that does that, so I appreciate him very, very much. Well, the first truth is this, truth number one, and I do have an outline back there if you'd like to get one off the table uh, and uh, kind of follow along. And the first one is this, we are known. In other words, God knows you. Isn't it great to know that the God of heaven knows you? And here's the thing, He knows everything about you. Now, I know my wife knows a lot about me, but she doesn't know everything. And I don't know everything about her. Now, I do know a lot. But God knows everything. Now, I'm going to preface every one of these with, with Scripture. And these Scriptures that we're going to look at tonight, they are meant to inspire you. Don't you like to be encouraged? Don't you like inspiration? Don't you like God speaking to your heart? Well, we're going to let the Word of God speak for itself tonight. I'm not going to elaborate uh, uh, throughout it and give you a great exegesis of, of, of every Scripture, but I want you to know that these are here to inspire you and to encourage you. It tells us in Psalm 139, and if you want to turn there, we're going to be in Psalm 139 throughout uh, at some, uh, some of these truths, but I want you to notice, first of all, verses 1 and 2. And the Word says, O Lord. Now when you see the word Lord in all capital letters, that's talking about Jehovah God. It's talking about Yahweh, Almighty God. And so I want you to understand that, that we are talking about the God of the universe who wants to be involved in your life. And this God of the universe has an incredible passion for your life. And so as we look at these verses, I want you to keep in mind who is speaking to your heart. And speaking to your life. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. Kind of like that. He knows when I go to bed and he knows when I get up. In other words, he has the full day. Uh, he, he knows exactly what's happening in a full day of my life. And so we understand that he is searching us, he knows us. And he knows every single thing about us. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, it says this, But if anyone loves God, this one is known by Him. That kind of speaks to the fact that we are children of God. That we are known. He is our Heavenly Father. And we are His children. So guess what? God knows you. Guess what? He knows your secrets. Now probably some of those secrets you wish He didn't know. But God knows about the sins. He knows the sins you commit. He knows the mistakes that you make. Yet, He still loves us. Aren't you glad even though we fail? And we fail at times, do we not? He still loves us. He tells us in 1 John 1, 9, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, we are in a relationship with God. We have been forgiven. But we're also in fellowship with God as He cleanses us on a daily basis. And so uh, uh, He knows uh, our secrets, our sins, our mistakes. You ever felt like no one sees you? You ever feel like no one hears you? You ever feel like nobody cares? Well, God does. 
And He knows exactly where you're at. You may feel invisible at times, but I promise you God knows where you're at. Um, one of the things I love about God is, is His passion that He has for us. It never ceases. His compassions are actually new every single morning. And I'm grateful for that. Because I worry sometimes, I fear sometimes, I fret sometimes, and He knows those things. And sometimes I'm insecure, but He knows and He cares about that part of my life. So He knows. One of the things that I love about God is we're never out of His sight. You know, I, I love Adam and Eve, and you know, I love to read the story about Adam and Eve, but you remember they tried to hide themselves from God in Genesis chapter 3? And God comes along in the cool of the day and He says, Adam, where are you? Now, God knew exactly where He was. But He wanted Adam to know where He was. And Adam was not in a very good place at that time. But God didn't desert them. Aren't you glad of that? And when we are in a, a, a state of where we're trying to hide from God or we're, we are, are, are trying to be out of His sight, you'll never get there. Because He always knows where you're at. But there's a second truth I want to deal with tonight, and that is this. Truth number two, we are unique. We are unique. In other words, God designed you. Nobody else did. You didn't come from a lab. You didn't come from a monkey. You didn't come from anything like that. God designed you. Now I want you to look around. I want you to... Take time here, and I want you to look around, and I want you to look at everybody real quick. Just do that. Now, do you see anyone that looks just like you? Anybody? Now, you may resemble each other as, as mother and daughter or, or father and son, but none, none of us look exactly alike. And you know, I heard years ago, I heard the longer you're married, the more you look like your spouse. Well, I'm ready to start looking like Denise because I don't want her looking like me. I thought I'd get an amen on that one. Oh, well. But you know what, folks? We are all unique. We have been designed by God. It tells us this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by Him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. So that tells me there is a design that God has created. And one of the things I love about God, and we're going to go back to Psalm 139, you're probably already there, but God has been present at every phase of our development. You ever thought about that? Every single phase of our development, God has been there. You know, say, well, Brother Steve, how do you know that? Well, it says in Psalm 139, verse 13, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. God did that. God designed you that way. It says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So, as part of His plan, part of His purpose, He designed you. And it tells us even in the book of Revelation, we can go to the last book of the Bible, and it tells us in chapter 4, verse 11, it tells us that great verse where it says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. We all agree with that, right? He deserves all that. And it goes on to say, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So everything is part of God's plan. Aren't you glad you're a part of God's plan? None of us look alike. None of us act alike. And by the way, this plan, this design that He made, the design of you was intentional. He did it on purpose. It was His intent to, to make you exactly the way you are. And not only that, not only was it intentional, it was wise. God knows what to do. God knew to make you exactly the way you are. God knew to make me exactly the way I am. 
But not only was it intentional and wise, but it was also purposeful. There is a purpose for your life. There's a reason why you were created in the first place. And we've got to remember, it's Almighty God who did that, who created us. Nothing exists out of His control. Get this, your height, your eye color, the width of your shoulders, the color of your skin, the texture of your hair, the size of your feet, the smile that you have, the voice that you use, the talents that you have, the gender you are, was designed by God. And it's not an accident. You were made on purpose. Now God is passionate for your life and God is involved in your life because He designed you. And you know what? We need to always make sure that we understand that and we always need to make sure that we are in tune with the designer of our life. But the third truth is this. We are never alone. Aren't you glad God's involved in your life that way? Now one of the things, and, and I talked to my dad uh, quite a bit, and it's been almost four years since my mother passed, and one of the things that he continues to talk about is how he feels so alone when he's in his house. And I understand that. And from a, a human standpoint, that is a real emotion. That is a, that's a real thing. But I always remind him. And I always want to remind him, and I want to remind us, even though we may be by ourselves in our house, we are never alone. And some of you have lost loved ones in the recent years, and, and I just want to encourage you with that, and I want to inspire you with that, that you are not alone. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, it says, And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you, he will be with you, Scripture says. He will not leave you, nor will He forsake you. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. That's from an Old Testament passage. But let's look at a New Testament passage. Psalm 23, verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No evil. For you are with me. Now let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. This is, this is getting personal, isn't it? He wants to be personable with you. He said, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So He's involved in our lives by being there for us, lifting us up, never leaving or forsake us. Look at, you're still there in Psalm 139. Look at verse 7. The psalmist writes, he says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? This is a psalm of David, and he's just in a questioning mode here, and he's questioning this. And he said, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. He's not saying he's there in the place called hell. He's just saying, if I was, God would be there. And he's saying, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall follow me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall, shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. I don't know about you, but that's encouraging to me. No matter the place we are at in our life, I'm not talking about physical places, I'm talking about even emotional, spiritual, uh, uh, mental, whatever it is. Wherever you're at in life, He's there. He will not forsake you. You see, God is fiercely loyal to you. 
I don't know. Sometimes I fail God and sometimes I'm not loyal to Him. But I'm telling you, He is always faithful to be loyal to me. When I walk through the dark valleys, God's there. When I face the unknown, God has been there. When I try to run, when I try to hide, when I try to rebel and even fight against God, I find Him there. No matter what, His faithfulness will never diminish. I will never be alone. Isn't that a truth that you like to hang on to? We are never alone. The fourth truth is this. We are loved. This is the day of love, if you will. Valentine's Day. I hope, husbands, you've told your wife you love her. And I hope, wives, you've told your husband you love him today. But I hope you've told God you love him as well. Because I'm telling you, every day he tells you he loves you. Now, you may not audibly hear that, but I promise you with the Spirit of God dwelling within your heart, and within your life, you know it every single day. You realize that He is speaking to you and He is, he is with you and he is, he is loving on you. And I tell you what, I want to be loved on by God, don't you? The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, But God who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sin, He made us alive together with Christ. Why did He do that? We know the answer to that. Because He loved us. God so loved the world. What's the rest of it say? That He gave His only what? Begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Turn to 1 John chapter 3. I want to show you a verse that I just absolutely uh, adore. I just love this verse. And you should too. It says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called what? Children of God. Now, in the original language, that is really what it's saying. It is a peculiar, out-of-this-world kind of love. Behold what manner. A peculiar uh, kind of love that's out of this world. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. But you know what? There's a responsibility for us. Because God loves us, and by the way, it is an agape love, right? It's an unconditional kind of love, and really and truly, that's the kind of love we are to have for, for our fellow man. It's the kind of love we should have for each other. And I'm not talking about an eros kind of love or a phileo kind of love. I'm talking about God's love, the agape love. It should be an unconditional love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. It should be an unconditional love for the enemies you have in this world because Jesus Himself said, love your enemies, right? So there is a responsibility because God loved us. We are to love each other. Right? Now I want you to just turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. It's not that hard to do. I hope you mean it. I hope you do. It says in John 15, verse 12, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. By the way, God's love has never waned. God's love has never changed. God's love is the same. And you know what? Love is not just something that God does. Love is who He is. We find that in the book of 1 John as well. God is love. Now I know until we get to, the, uh, to, uh, to heaven, we're not going to understand it fully. But I think that we can see through Scripture how important it is for us to love one another because He loved us. Aren't you glad He gave us His love freely and generously? I am. So that's the fourth truth. Well, the fifth truth tonight is this, we are secure. 
He wants to know as He's involved in our life and He has passion for our, our life, He wants you to know that you are secure in Him. And I know that we, we teach once saved, truly saved, always saved, and I believe that with all my heart. But there's more to it. And as we journey through life, He wants you to understand that you are secure. Not just in your salvation, but in your life. He's steadfast. And He's trustworthy, even in danger. It tells us in 2 Samuel 22, it says this, and I love how, how the Old Testament brings this out as well. But He said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer. Now you know what? I could stop right there and we can go home and we would be encouraged, right? But it also says that He is the God of my strength, in whom... I will trust. How many other things do we try to put our trust in that fall apart? Well, when you put your trust in God, who is the rock and who's the fortress, who's your strength, it will not fall apart. You are placed on a firm foundation. It tells us this in the book of Romans. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, now help me finish it, who can be against us, right? You can go on and read verses 35 through 39 and that will explain a little bit more. Uh, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So we're secure. He tells us in Hebrews 13, 6, we may boldly say this, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. And it ends that verse with, what can man do to me? Now you think about it for a minute. You know, Man can take our life, but man cannot take our soul. Man cannot take our relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. So it doesn't matter what comes your way, you're going to eventually be with your Heavenly Father. And I don't know if that excites you or not, but it excites me, knowing that I'm secure in that area. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found this out. You know the story in the book of Daniel where uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, had this statue and everybody had to bow down to it and, and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't do it. Well, somebody squealed on them and somebody you know, turned them in and you know the rest of the story. They're standing before the king and the king is saying, you know, you're going to have to bend, you're going to have to bow, you're going to have to worship me. And these three Hebrew children said this, if that is the case... Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And He will deliver us from your hand, O King. But if not, and that's the kind of attitude we ought to have as well when we're going through things in life. But if not, let it be known that we will not bend or bow or worship you as King. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't harm them. What about Daniel? Daniel found out that uh, Darius made this decree and, and uh, you know, Daniel had this uh, pattern in his life where he would pray to, to God three times a day. He would open up his window and pray. What a great testimony that is, by the way. And because he didn't do the decree and go by the decree that the king had laid out, he was thrown into a lion's den. But you remember what happened, right? God's angels shut the mouth of the lions. And it tells us in Daniel chapter 6, it says, no injury whatever was found on him. That sounds like security to me, right? What does Mike say? Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. He was petting them, petting those lions. Because he was secure in the Lord. Folks, the world's broken, right? The world's unsafe. The world's scary. Two shootings today, if you've, if you've noticed the news. It's scary out there. But let me remind you that God is steadfast. Let me remind you, if you don't get anything else out of this tonight, I want you to write these three words down. You ready? God is enough. He's steadfast. He's faithful. He's our anchor for our soul. 
We have an unchanging God who will hold us fast. We are secure. Well, let's look at the last truth. Number six is this. We are set apart. Now, I want you to hear this. Because of God, you are different. Did you get that? Because of God, you're different. God has come in. He has saved your soul. And you're different. Well, if you're different, you ought to act that way, right? We have been set apart. God wants us to be separate from this world. The Bible says, love not the world, nor the things in this world. Now, I know we're going to have to be a part of the world, but we're not to be in the world, okay? We, we have got to understand that we are different as His children. We are to be the light reflecting that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord. It tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, it says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for Himself a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. In Colossians 3, it says in verse 1 and 2, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Sitting at the right, He's sitting at the right hand of God. Then He says, set your mind on things above. Not on the things of the earth. That verse speaks a lot to me. It says, first of all, let's seek. And then it says, let's set our mind. Seek the things of God and let's put our mind to it. Because we're different. We are set apart. 1 Peter 2.9 tells it like this. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So when He saved you, He set you apart. And you're different. You know what? People of the world ought to be able to tell the difference when you're out in life each and every day of your life. So folks, being set apart means living in ways that glorify God instead of being shaped by the patterns of a broken world. This world wants to shape you. The devil wants to shape you into his pattern. But like I said, God has set you apart. So you're different. You're special. You're valuable. You've been set apart. So the truth of the matter is this, folks. We're known... We're designed, we're never alone, we're always loved, we're secure, and we're different. We've been set apart. So on this Valentine's Day, just remember the passion that God has for your life. And remember, He's involved in your life in a very special way. You know what? I'm thankful that He's chosen to be involved in my life. And I'll always... Strive to be more and more like Him. Would you pray with me? Father, we love Your Word. Father, we love the truth of Your Word. We love the encouragement and the inspiration that we can get from Your Word. So God, I pray as we have uh, spoken Your Word in several verses tonight, I pray that it will impact hearts. Those in this building, those who have heard online, Lord, I pray it has meant something and will continue to mean something that you're passionate about each and every one of us and that you're involved in a special way in our life. Lord, take this, use it in our hearts, and Lord, I always let us be reminded that you're God of the universe. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.